So what do you get when you take a fractal node 304, make it eat its vegetables and let it grow up a little bit? You get the fractal node 804. Hello everybody and welcome to Tech Uploaded. I'm Chris and today I've got the Fractal Node 804, the big brother to the Node 304, which I actually used for my NAS build. And uh, I gotta say with all the drive base in this thing, if you wanted to take that build to the next level, yeah, this is your natural choice. There's a lot of really interesting stuff going on in this case. So I thought what I would do is do the usual run through of all of the different features of the case and then why not put it to the test and do a quick little build in here and see how things actually work out in a real world application. So let's take a look. Okay, so before I get to building with the Node 804, let's take a look at some of the key features of this unique case. Taking a first look at the case, you can see the exterior features a nice brushed aluminum finish with an attractive grille covering most of the top of the case. A large windowed side panel allows you to show off your finished build. Front inputs include two USB 3.0 ports, one headphone jack, one microphone jack, and your power button. The dual chamber layout allows for optimal cooling capacity and easy cable management, which we'll take a look at during the finished build overview. The motherboard tray allows for MATX or mini ITX configurations, and the hard drive mounting system is very impressive for a case of this size, fitting up to either eight three and a half inch drives and four two and a half inch drives, or 10 three and a half inch drives and two two and a half inch drives. And these can be either hard drives or SSDs. Three Fractal Design Silent Series R2 fans are included with the case, with space for an additional seven fans and very impressive support for up to four radiators simultaneously. For full fan and radiator specifications, do see the video description below as they are quite extensive. A very welcome sight, all intakes feature removable dust filters providing a dust-free interior. And this is something many manufacturers seem to overlook, so it's much appreciated here. Additional space in the front allows for mounting of a slim optical bay drive and two additional two and a half inch drives when you pop off the front panel. A fan controller is included with a switch for three settings, which is always a nice inclusion and something that I've seen on every fractal case that I've come across so far. Five expansion slots allow for multiple GPU setups and graphics cards up to 320 millimeters in length are supported and that is reduced to 290 millimeters if a fan is installed in the lower front position. Near the power supply mounting area, you will find two Velcro straps for cable management, which is very welcome if you have a power supply that is a non-modular power supply, since you're gonna have a lot of loose cables hanging out right there, and power supplies up to 260 millimeters deep are supported. So, all those specs sound good in theory, so now let's see how everything works out in a simple air-cooled MATX build. So there's all the technical details, but how was it to actually build inside of the Node 804? Well, what I decided to do was go ahead and take my old ASUS Micro ATX motherboard and throw it in there with a Core i5-3550. This used to be my home theater PC setup before I switched over to my Xeon. Having done a build in a Fractal Design R4 and a Node 304, the 804 was no surprise when it came to being a well thought out, well engineered case. Uh, installation for the most part, was fairly easy. Uh, there were a few gripes that I had along the way, one of them being the fan controller, since this case is divided right in half, they decided to opt to put the switch and all the cables for the fan controller on the motherboard side. So what you have to do, at least what I did, is I used the little hole that's up at the top, and I think it's there to allow you to run your um, motherboard auxiliary power through there for your CPU. But thankfully the hole is big enough, if you're patient, you can feed the three three pin headers through there as well as the SATA power connection that this little hub uses. And then uh, even though your speed control switch for low, medium and high is over here on this side, on the business end where your motherboard and everything goes, you can have all those cables hidden and they don't get in the way of your hard drive cage or anything like that. It just takes a little bit of patience to get everything routed. The other thing, I wish that this had some grommets in it instead of just a completely wide open area over here on the side with the motherboard because if you do one of these, you can kind of see through there. But that's being incredibly nitpicky and most people aren't going to do that. And as you can see from looking at the other side, it actually has a very ingeniously planned Velcro tie down area right behind the power supply, which in my case, I opted to use a non-modular 500 watt power supply and having those little tie downs was great because I could get all the cables under control that I wasn't gonna be using, which was a lot. 
a lot of power for SATA and Molex. So I was able to get all those tied down out of the way and kind of control other things as far as where I wanted them, wanted them to go in the case. Now, another thing to note is you can pop off the front very easily and you have to be a little careful when you do it because you have to route all of these cables through again to uh, the inside of the case. That was the actually the worst part was getting all of these cables tied down and kind of out of the way since again you had that 50-50 design I had to get it over on this half so it wasn't uh, in the visible section over here in the window but you will look you have the area to mount the slot loading optical drive so if you wanted to use one for like a hard or for a laptop you could put it there and then you have two mounts up here on the front like I said earlier for mounting your SSDs if you were going to put them there. Downside to messing with the front panel you can turn off the computer so all in all, it was very easy to build in this case. I think I've got that point across. And I will say, had this case been around at the time that I did my home theater PC build with the Xeon chip in it that I'm currently using, I probably would have selected, selected this over the BitPhoenix. Now, the BitPhoenix I do think looks a little bit better in my entertainment center, but this isn't going to stand out either. It has all the same qualities that I wanted in a case when I was trying to pick one out, and that's something that's very nondescript, just black, will blend in with the entertainment center. And even though this case is a little bit wider than the BitPhoenix, what you gain in a little bit of width, you make up for in your sanity because this is laid out in a way that you're used to building things. The motherboard goes in the way that you're used to. You have plenty of room for the fans. You can fit your hands in there. You can get to the back of your motherboard nice and easy. You've got lots of expandability. And saving the best two things for last, if you watch my review of the Corsair Aero 540, while that is a full ATX case, this case, being smaller, actually addresses two of my major concerns that I had with that. Number one, you have a lot more storage flexibility in the Node 804. Number two, with the exception of the rear fans, which you're probably going to have exhausting anyway, all of the fans in this case have dust filters on them. So thank you, Fractal. Thank you for thinking about that. It means a lot. As a matter of fact, this entire mesh on the top is one giant dust filter if you look at it from underneath. That is welcome, and I like having that as an option. Some people don't like it because it restricts airflow and you have to clean, but I'd much rather take these off, blow them off with a, you know, an air duster. I use one that you plug in and not have to worry about getting really you know, into detail and taking wires out and things like that to get your case dusted out. So, And if you're using radiators, that's also very welcome. So overall, a few minor gripes with the fit and finish. There could be a few more tie downs on the opposite side of the motherboard to maybe keep things a little more under control, but those Velcro strips do make up for that. You know, the front panel doesn't go in quite all the way, and I did have some paint that was chipping off of some of the rivets inside the case. But other than that, uh, everything about this case was really pretty well thought out. And again, I just, I really appreciate a little bit of extra size in a case style like this, which is pretty unique in order to save me from going crazy trying to build inside of the darn thing, which I've been down that road. And if you're looking for a home theater PC build that is not gonna make you wanna pull your hair out, you've got the room for a case of this size, this is a good option. If you're looking for a NAS box and you wanna put a bunch of hard drives in it, this is a good option. If you wanna do a portable gaming build and you wanna put a ton of water cooling in it, this is a good option. So while it's a little bit strange in its design, I think it's a very versatile case. As always, if you found this video helpful, please go ahead and click on that subscribe button. You can also follow me on Twitter over at Tech Uploaded. And you know the drill by now. Don't be a stranger. Check back soon.